again. Do it 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 again. Do What's up guys, today we are finally going to be covering indoor bouldering. So I'm going to try and make this an ongoing series on the channel where I choose to cover climbs that are either number one, difficult, but not to the point that they are straight up undoable. And of course this is relative to my skill set and body type. Number two, interesting in terms of how well thought out and unique the setting of the climb is. And number three, just straight up how fun the climb is, how much I enjoy doing it basically. Of course, that last criteria is highly subjective, and if it wasn't obvious enough already, my favourite type of climbs in terms of fun are dinos, which if you didn't know, by definition is when the climber makes a dynamic movement that uses momentum to get to the next hold. And yeah, as so, there may or may not be a somewhat focus on dynamic style climbs in this series, but I will also try to cover other climbs that fall under the other two criteria as well. So yeah, this is Dylan's Dino Diaries episode 1, let's get to it. Just a bit of context firstly, after I came back from Korea two months ago, literally in my first climbing session back, this happened. So my ankles recovered now, but at the time of this first session at 1UP, I was probably like maybe 60-70%. Just thought I'd add that in because there's going to be a few funny references to it later. Anyway, back to the video. This first orange climb is a two-part coordination dyno and sort of resembles a slow paddle move. That orange one is um, not too bad. It's just a um, right towel. Oh, 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 oh! That was the ankle there. As much as I enjoy the two-part coordination move there, unfortunately, a move that requires me to land on my bad right foot was still too much for me at this point in time. So, here's Eddie sending it for me instead. Nice! Very nice. Next stop is this yellow dino on the prowl section, which is an orange tag graded climb. This one seems like a very simple jump, but had me very confused at the start, as not only did the underclean catch feel really far away because of the angle of the wall, but I also felt like it was really hard to generate power off of the starting position. The second I realised I can put two hands on the top of the start rather than one hand on each side, my ability to generate power immediately goes up, and then it feels very doable. I would just pass. I don't, I don't, I don't 
사실 난 데이지보다 난 걷게 물든 로스 뭐가 중요해 다 힘들게 핑고 난 겨울에 놀줄 몰랐던 남자우가 어우르시 나도 돌아보 yeah yeah 다 벅차 보일 거야 매일이 혹은 안 오길 바라겠지 넌 내일이 근데 여긴 오더라 걱정 마 baby 이 작은 두 손에 젖을 거야 baby yeah bitch boy yeah 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 this next one is an orange tag purple climb, and it's not exactly the most difficult, but I thought the commentary in this one was pretty funny and wanted to include it. <laughs> this next one is a red tag graded blue climb, which involves a somewhat awkward low body start into a high foot dyno, and then a pretty sketchy big move finish. For my body height, it worked to simply flag my left foot out to counterbalance my body being on the right side of the starting hold. For the next move though, I didn't think about putting my foot up at first, so I tried to just jump it and then this happened. Really? I think it's harder as the end scary. Let's go Eddie. Oh, so easy, so easy. <laughs> Eddie, you, you couldn't tell me while I was struggling? Oh. Wait, 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 go for the start, go for the start. <laughs> the whole time you couldn't have told me something? Yo! <laughs> wait, what did you do again? He just, he he just held it with one hand. Yeah. Oh, you, uh, you put your foot up first. Oh, you almost touched the black. <laughs> Yo, that's so scary. What the fuck? What? What? Oh my god. That's so scary. Okay, so even if you miss your right hand still got you. So once again, I stuck to my left foot flag start method, which worked better for me. And then, I made sure to actually put my right foot up this time before I jumped, which makes the move more of a quick step up move rather than just jumping for it with only raw power. And then, after I saw Eddie do the final move for me, I was like, okay, it's not as scary as I thought it was, because when I go for it, I actually keep my right arm on the other hold, so even if I miss, I wouldn't necessarily fall. And yeah, that just goes to show, with Dino sometimes, it's literally just mental. The final climb of the session was this green climb, which is a black tag grade. This one starts with a one arm catch dyno, and then there's a really big high foot mantle in the middle, and then a very interesting finish that has to be done a pretty specific way. The higher left hand hold is too sloped for me to match my hands on it, so here I tensed my core and threw my left foot up to where my right hand was essentially doing a quick mantle. I would say I'm pretty flexible with doing high foots, but this move was really exhausting and I could not do it consistently. As for the end, let's just say it's interesting. Oh, very nice. Come on. Oh. 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 <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh my! What the oh, fuck? Yeah. I think we didn't have a rifle. Yeah, he got a rifle. Yes, there you go, nice. The end here is surprisingly tricky. Not only do I have no proper right foot hold, so my right foot is just smearing against the wall, but the finish hold is an upside down small crimp, which is really difficult to match when I have unstable feet. Once I understood the upside down hand beta, the end felt much more reasonable to hold stably. Welcome to Block House Nashville. This is Dylan, this is Ryan. What is that? Kicking off the session is this black climb right by the cave section. I think this one is quite interesting because especially around the middle section with the pockets, you have many different options you can do depending on your arm reach and core strength. Typically, you don't really match on pockets given how little space you have in them. So for me, it felt pretty natural to use a tiny bit of controlled momentum to swing my right hand straight into the next pocket and then get my right foot up on the feature. From there, it's a pretty straightforward left right, left right finish. So here, Ryan attempts the same right hand cross beta that I did, but he barely doesn't have enough reach to make it without cutting his feet loose. So instead, he puts his right heel up on the higher handhold, which puts his body closer to statically reach for the right hand crossover. Although, he doesn't realize that he could also put his right foot up on the feature afterwards, so he has to campus for a little bit on the next move. The thing with these types of pockets is that you can get really creative with how you use them, even if you can't reach for the right hand crossover. Here, I match and hand swap on the pocket using the foot swap technique of putting one hand over the other and then pulling out the one underneath. And then I reach for the second pocket using my left hand this time, which is much closer. I then deliberately cut feet and tense my core to stabilize and twist around so my right hand can hit the next pocket. Then I wrap my feet around the dual text of the previous pocket for a little bit of leverage, which allows me to twist around again so my left hand can grab the next hold, which then puts me in the same position to finish. Next up is this black lash dino in the cave section, where you have to swing from the stalactite feature over to the two volumes on the left. Once I got a feel of how the landing was like, I found this one to be not too bad once I generated enough power from the swing, as the left hand catch was really solid and pretty comfortably stops you from falling back down. The yellow one right next to it, on the other hand, is an entirely different beast. Essentially, it's the same climb but at a higher grade. Not only is the catch very sloped as opposed to the jug previously on the black, but it's positioned so much higher that you can't really rely on it to keep you from falling back onto the ground. To sum it up, you pretty much have to do the same move but with no hands this time on the landing. Corner, we have Ryan! Corner, we have Dylan! Let us from the west. This is the. Are they both in the west? Oh, wait, are they both Chinese? Big one is with the knees from my sources. Oh. Huh? Okay. Three, two, one, go! Oh, the one in the white shirt is going up with the other one in the white shirt. 
Oh no! Maya had a bit of a stumble, but they both reached the end at the same time. Dinos, let's go! Jill has got it! Maya's got it! Okay, now it's all about how they finish. Oh, Dylan wins! First climb of day two was this yellow overhanging climb on the prow section. The crux of this climb is definitely around the middle section, but it's also really long and physical and gets a little scary around the end where you have to deal with undercling crimps whilst you're really high up. Come on, right hand. Oh. Not deep enough. Huh? Oh, nice. There's this one part near the beginning where you have to do a pretty aggressive downward heel hook and I got to the point where I was so tired I couldn't even do that part anymore. So here's Ryan sending it instead. Here we have a partner climb, where two people climb two overlapping routes at the same time. In order for the blue side to even start, Ryan has to lean his entire body on my legs in a superman position. For the second part, I have to get on the inside of the blue climber whilst they put all four of their limbs straight on the wall. Here, I'm able to match on Ryan's stable left hand, which gets me to the next hold. After getting around the corner, I can plant my left heel securely into the next hold, which makes my left leg a really good hold. My right leg on the other hand, which is only smearing against the wall, can only provide a little bit of leverage and cannot support an entire body's weight. So here, Ryan has to get to the left leg ASAP. Although he ends up grabbing my pants instead of my leg. And I guess that works too. To finish, I have to replicate the same superman move from the start, which allows me to match my hands on the end hold. After resting up, I came straight back to this yellow prow on my next session, this time making sure to do it early on while I was still fresh. For the big move, I land the move statically and then purposely cut my feet loose whilst I match my hands and get my feet straight up. I use a left heel to help me pull into the first crimp and then from this point it's all about body positioning relative to the hold.
With underclings, they become better the higher you're positioned relatively. So you can see me constantly trying to lean away from the side pulls and trying to stand up higher for the down facing underclings. Definitely not an easy one, but I got it in the end. So back to this yellow lash dino. On my previous attempts, I was actually never fully committing on my swing, not necessarily because I was scared, but because I didn't think it would be possible to stabilize the landing if I went 100% power, so I was opting for a more controlled approach. However, I realized in this session that that's not actually the case, and you can see I'm starting to get much closer now that I'm full sending, and then I actually stick the landing for once. The issue is, the second half isn't even easy. I get on top of the feature and then try to stretch my right foot out to the foothold, but this method feels impossible for me, especially because the two handholds are also really bad. I saw some other people trying to cheese it instead by skipping the dino completely and just mantling their way up the stalactite feature. I got curious so I tried it this way as well. As cool as the cheesy mantle method is, it feels like a really big cop out to me, as I don't think the climb is anywhere near as difficult as it's intended to be if you do it that way, so I wanted to complete it properly. This time I try a new method where I swing my feet over to the next foothold, since it's too far to stretch out for statically, and this works. I then have to do a really flexible high left foot in order to finish. This one felt like I was at the very last limits of my flexibility. But yeah, we finally did it. That only took me like 30 tries. <laughs> Ending off the session was this black climb, which is very, very my style. Some people might disagree, but personally, I found the beta for this one to be pretty creative and interesting. There's a pretty cool big move up where you can opt to keep your left hand on the previous hold before matching. And then what I found cool was this move where you turn around on the hold. This way it puts me in position where I can stretch both arms out and reach for the next hold. Then we have a fairly simple mantle-like finish. Pretty cool. Okay, 